everybody. This Arun from Tech Mahindra. <laughs> Mike, thank you. And that was Mohan. <coughs> Great job, Mohan. <laughs> I'm sure the organizers are ex extremely appreciative that you did in 10 minutes because they were running behind a little bit. By the way, just so that uh, apart from sharing the dream of building the network of the future, me and Mike have a, one more uh, common factor. Both of our daughters go to Georgia Tech. Go, go, go Yellow Jackets. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, uh, QCT and Mike, for giving us this opportunity. It's an honor. Uh, in the uh, next 15 minutes, I would like to present what we, we think is, is the network of the future, what are the challenges, and who are the key players and the key roles that different players play in this ecosystem, and how we, as Tech Mahindra, as a system integrator, is part of this, the catalyst to deliver this transformation. Plan. So, the network of the future, what is the network of the future? It is based on the, 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 the different types of applications, virtual reality, the telemedicine, the autonomous car, all of this in you know, less than 10 years back had <coughs> science fiction, today it is reality. The, so these applications puts a different type of a demand, primarily around uh, low latency and high, high throughput. Next is the devices, the explosion of devices is completely transforming the balance of equation between the control plane data and the user plane data. All of this is driving the, uh, the change that uh, we see with the operators today, uh, primarily around how they can build it uh, at, at web scale and at web scale costs. And that leads to what we call as the new demands. The new demands as we talked about are the completely elastic, throughput, agility, and uh, capacity, and low latency, and extremely high coverage. So the approach on how this is going to be built is, is divided into three major areas in, in our opinion. Number one, the new types of access technologies that includes uh, 5G, small cells, uh, high bandwidth, uh, and fiber to the uh, node and uh, residences as well as the GFAST, uh, the newly being launched by most of the operators across the world. The new architecture, of course, is completely virtual, uh, cloud native, and uh, software defined. And it is absolutely automated. The, the gone are the days where uh, your network operations uh, build uh, and manage uh, elements in one, one element at a time. Today, they don't manage one, at least the expectation is that manage by policy rather than by individual uh, network elements. So at Tech Mahindra, we have been around for more than 30 years and we have seen this many times, whether it is 2G, 3G, LTE or uh, uh, on the wireline side from uh, ports line to completely IP, uh, uh, IP, uh, IP based networks or the software move completely uh, from a mainframe to uh, uh, open source based, uh, microservices uh, uh, based uh, architecture. So we have been through this, we have been part and parcel of being a catalyst driving this transformation and uh, from that point of view, as a system integrator, apart from the primary, the technology vendors like the Quantas and the Intels and the various other vendors, and the operators who are driving some of this uh, change, we act as the glue and uh, we play as a system integrator, we play a critical role as a glue. Uh, and uh, the, the primary challenges that we have to solve as a ecosystem uh, uh, are uh, sevenfold. Starting from top, uh, on a, from a, in, a, in clockwise, number one is technology. Technology is still evolving. And uh, it is uh, the maturity of SD and NFV is uh, still uh, still a lot to be desired. So that means that we have a, quite a lot of uh, period next five to uh, ten years. There will be a lot of uh, experimentation, which needs a lot of uh, 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 effort uh, from all all of all of us, whether it is standards or it is uh, standard bodies or the vendors, technology vendors and obviously the open source community. And uh, in terms of the, the migration of the existing network 
you know, it's, it's easy to build something new. Uh, that's what the web scale company had, had it uh, easy for them. Whereas migrating is a lot more complicated. How that migration has to have happened, where should we start? Where, you know, whether you know, you should, do you invest in actually force fitting or you let the natural depth of the old uh, and uh, slow migration. So those are the decisions that all of us will have to take uh, uh, across the board. As I mentioned about, the new operation is completely different from how it was done before. There is a complete mindset change. There are a lot of, uh, you know, I meet with uh, network operations, head of network operations from top to bottom. A lot of people resist the change. You know, I've been in meetings where the customer, the, or the, the regional network operations have the, you know, over my dead body, no automation possible in this area. Uh, because there is a self-preservation as well there. So there is a lot of mindset change, training, and uh, people change. So it's a transformation. It is really uh, difficult that a lot of operators uh, facing today. And of course, the business models of how you uh, procure, consume is different. You know, as a service models uh, are very prevalent now. CapEx sharing, cap sharing, capacity sharing, and CapEx sharing is the more in, in some of the emerging uh, uh, trends that we, we are observing. And all of this needs to be governed. And the implementation uh, from a technology topology perspective is, is also evolving. You know, we started with oh, the Uberize, you know, the one single, uh, you know, scale, massive scale data center serving everything. Then we decided that we said there were three levels, big, medium, small, and there is a new the operator talking about uh, you know, build big, medium, small, and extra small. So we uh, basically covering the various uh, you know uh, the needs of the telecom operations. And finally, all of this dimensioning the new uh, uh, new engineering with the, uh, 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 you know parameters uh, that we need to evolve for uh, you know dimensioning this network build and building this network. So if we are tech Mahindra, the, 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 what we call is like a like a good uh, you know the soccer analogy three four three, uh, which is the three mega trends that are you were shaping this evolution and build uh, creation of this network of the future, and we focus on the four areas which is access for the OSS and the enterprise networks, and this is our focus areas and we are building solutions and platforms with our partners. And what we call is we do three things for our operator, our operator customers, which is R, that is to run better, C, to change faster, and G, to grow greater, the revenue of our network operators. How do we do it? What we call is four C's and three P's, which is conformance. That is being part of an open source foundation. We have been one of the founding member of uh, ONAP. Uh, we talked about Timon on card. We have uh, contributed more than 20,000 hours in development of the R card and also involved currently in M card um, and several other uh, industry. Part. You know, very often uh, you might have seen that uh, what is standards. You know, open source is the future of standards. There is gone are the days where everybody get together, and create standard. You know, the agendas are driven. Now the open source becomes de facto standard. So that's why we. We talk about conformance means open source. So, uh, of course, collaboration. All of this is not possible without partners, and uh, we have uh, more than 40 plus partners in this space, spread across various aspects of technology. Intel and QCT, who are here, are one of the uh, uh, crucial and uh, important partners in this uh, evolution, and. Uh, in terms of, we have uh, created, we launched about a year back, uh, VNF Exchange, which is, uh, uh, you know, we, we the one of the biggest problem when uh, we were uh, taking forward this uh, virtualized network, uh, network is the disaggregated uh, hardware and middleware and the virtualizers and the nanos and then the VNFs have to be put together, integrated, and uh, and not just in a, as a science project, but with uh, with predefined uh, configurations that are tried and tested and uh, performance uh, benchmarked. So this is the purpose of this VNF exchange. As part of this VNF exchange, we have three labs and uh, spread across uh, US in Seattle, back in Bangalore, uh, and, uh, and in Europe and Brussels. 
and uh, all of this supported by uh, an ecosystem of partners and we are also soon launching uh, a, a portal, VNF Exchange portal where uh, partners can submit uh, uh, images and we create the configured, configured pre-configured pre images that can be easily downloaded and deployed uh, as part of our uh, ecosystem support. Uh, one of the examples of this that is here is in, uh, in, uh, in uh, demonstration, you, you, you should check out uh, in the booth is a storage as a service which we uh, developed along with uh, Quanta and uh, Hedwig and I strongly urge you to go and check it out. Uh, we call that as a storage, storage as a service. Um, in terms of our what, uh, you know, how do we uh, engage with our customers, operator customers in in getting, uh, getting them through this uh, transformation journey. Uh, one, of course, consulting, then validation, integration, and then the operations. So this is the four broad buckets in which we engage with our customers, whether it is deploying a virtualized RAN or deploying a virtualized DEVL packet core. We have proof points with various customers across uh, US and Europe. I can proudly say our teams uh, were part of the first uh, voiceover, uh, first virtualized network deployed with the, the, the it's not about just making it work. The make, it's more, what is most important is making it repeatable with deployment guides, operations guides. So it's the, the productionizing is what is our, our experience, our, uh, the, which has been our, our uh, unique differentiator because of 30 years of working with operators across the world. Uh, I think uh, finally, this is our uh, uh, network services portfolio, broadly classified uh, classified as a run portfolio and a change portfolio and as grow portfolio. Whether it is uh, you know operations and maintenance of uh, the virtualized network or the legacy network while the new network is being built, so that the operators can focus on the future rather than the past, or designing the network and migrating as well as realizing what we call as a realization is that how do you, once you create a, a configurable, uh, configurable network, how do you duplicate it and build it and you know, take that cookie cutter and, to, and create multiple cookies out of it. That's, that's, that's what we call as a, uh, the realization. And then automation, which is uh, how you do all that in a more automated manner. How do you operate it? How do you define a policy driven uh, operations, network operations? Um, again, it's part and parcel of productionizing what is there in the labs. That's that's our focus. We have built along with our partners uh, several other partners I mentioned earlier with uh, Altiostar, Mavenir, uh, Affirm, uh, and many other partners. We have built multiple use cases. One particular use case is of why I want to point out is which we built along with Saguna and uh, Vimi is a multi-axis mobile edge computing use case. It's a great use case and a demonstrator for how a low latency network is important, is can completely change the user experience. Where this is where we showcase a AR, VR, showcase a use case where you move your headset and immediately you see the new image downloaded without the latency issues, latency issues that you would otherwise face in a real mobile network. So, and uh, we have uh, on the enterprise side, we have partnered with several of the SD WAN technology vendors. And uh, of course, I already talked about ONAP. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we are one of the, as a founding member of ONAP, we have taken it up and uh, we work with one of the uh, large operator in uh, Down Under on productionizing it. It is still early stages. All, everything is uh, as a, ONAP as a, as a whole is still a way, way to go, but this is something, a big first step that we have taken uh, with Ona. And finally, what I want to leave uh, with you is that we are, uh, uh, with the experience that we have, the partnership that we have, uh, uh, we are a trusted uh, transforma transformation partner for your network transformation journey. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Thank you.